Good morning and welcome to the vlog. It's 8 o'clock, which is very, very early for me, but I have a busy day planned. I'm going to head up towards and probably through Rugeley, and on the way I'm going to refill the water tank, need to stop off for a visit to Tesco's supermarket, and also, wait for it, try to get a haircut. Before we get too far away though, let me share with you this absolutely fantastic bit of canal as you head away from Fradley Junction. It's long, straight, tree-lined, and with the sun shining, just wonderful. Fradley's significant not only because of the junction with the Coventry Canal we saw in the last vlog, but also because it's here the Trenton Mersey takes a sharp change in direction. We've been going southwest across the country up until now, but here, in the space of just a few hundred yards, the canal takes an abrupt 90 degree turn right, and now we're going northwest. Yes, this is speeded up. I'm not a maniac on the boat. Within a quarter mile or so, there's a lock. These boats moored just ahead of it. I bet they're friendly, really. A short pause here to let this other boat down. We chatted away on the lock side, as boaters do. It's a very friendly environment. Then I felt quite bad for disturbing this little chap. That should be the only lock for today, from now on it's straight cruising, unless I do so well that I get completely to the other side of Rugeley and heading up towards Great Haywood, in which case there are another couple of locks to do. This is not going to be a scenery vlog, but every now and then I just need to let the canal speak for itself. To your left, this is Kings Bromley Wharf, not to be confused with Kings Bromley Marina, which comes next, just round the corner. This handy sign explains where you are. And this is the marina, which looks very posh, as marinas often do. Crucially, they have a shop that sells ice cream. The gorgeous countryside continues, and despite the weather, only one or two other boats around. Isn't this just ridiculously pretty? Of the few boats that are moving, what a pleasure to go past this one, the Micron Theatre boat last seen in Vlog 53, when we locked together at Stockton. Houses on the horizon mean we're coming into a village called Hansacre, and I can tell anyway, because there's plastic bottles and the usual detritus starting to float past, some of which I managed to scoop up. If you fancy buying a place here, this one's for sale. It's almost 400 grand, if you're curious. Am I being followed around by power stations or something? I'm beginning to get suspicious. Straight after Hansacre comes the more industrial looking Armitage. So that's how you hold a tarpaulin in place. Milk bottles, who knew? Not marked on my guide, but there's a sign saying facilities on the left here by which they mean a footpath to a shop. It's useful to know. Apparently I'm coming up to a bit where the canal is wide enough only for one boat. You're supposed to run ahead and check it. Well, that's not terribly practical when you're solo, so I'm just going to have to peer as far ahead as I can, go along and hope for the best. As luck would have it, a boat coming the other way emerged, and I could simply ask him if anyone was following behind, which they were not. It probably doesn't look as tight on camera as it felt, but it is a little narrower than usual going round this section. And looking back, you wouldn't want to be halfway round there and meet another boat coming through. Do you remember last year how all I ever saw on the canal was allotments? These are the first I've seen this time round. 
it turns out that that narrow bit wasn't the narrow bit. This is the narrow bit at Armitage Tunnel. Well, it used to be a tunnel, but now has bridges over it and is only wide enough for one boat. It's really tight, really tight. Breathe in, this is horrid. Oh, and just when you think you're coming out the other side, it carries on being narrow. In fact, it goes on for an eternity. Yes, eternity. This is the stuff of Stephen King novels. Will this never end? Bear in mind, you're watching this at triple speed. At last, feel the width. How the dickens are you supposed to tackle that solo? I only went in because a pedestrian said he could see the other end and nothing was coming. Luckily, he was right. Time to recover my shattered nerves. And while I'm doing that, let's refill the water tank. Then another, albeit smaller, challenge of a blind S-bend under a bridge. I think I need a quick duck break. Here's an unusually plumaged bird and its chicks. That's better. I feel soothed. I'm doing pretty well, I think. It's 10 to 11 now. I'm just about to come into Rugeley once I've finished filling up the tank with water. And then it'll be a stop first for the haircut, I think, then to the supermarket, and then onwards out the other side to find a mooring for the night. Another go with my toot toot, and round the blind S bend we go. Just houses the other side, but look, that power station is following me around. He's not the slightest bothered by the boat, he's looking for tuna. Disappointingly, Rugeley was the single worst place for plastic waste in the canal that I've ever been through, and I went through Birmingham. It was non-stop. And it's a busy place too, so many boats moored here, but I squeezed in between these two ahead. That was a successful stop. Shopping done, haircut done and a sandwich for lunch. So now pressing on just to go out into the countryside a bit to moor up. You're probably wondering about the haircut, aren't you? Would you like to see it? There you go. Shorter. A lot shorter. Much better. It was sunny before lunch and I'd planned to carry on some way. But these clouds look very ominous, so I decided to pull in on the outskirts of town. Everyone else has clearly done it, why not me? Well, turns out I kept scraping the bottom as I pulled in. I need a shallower drafted boat. No choice but to press on to my planned terminus and pass some very lovingly tended gardens whose only benefit would appear to be for the canal dweller. Apologies for the fly, the boat spiders have clearly been busy. This is the Brindley Aqueduct on the northern edge of Rugeley. Press pause if you want to read about it, and a gory murder too. Unbelievably, that's still the River Trent, which, like those power stations, is following me about. Rugeley and its sadly much littered canal is now behind me, and its green lush countryside once more. Like the Trent, the railway also snakes alongside, with several of those infinitely long freight trains running past, the ones that, like the Armitage Tunnel, have no discernible end. Despite the iron thunder of the nearby rails, this is where I plan to stop, so stop I will. I'll have a nice cup of tea and wipe the remains of that poor fly off the window. The next day dawned bright and clear but chilly. There's not a huge amount to document, but there's a swan round here with friends in high places. You couldn't see it until you went past, too late to film, but there was actually a swan there, tucked away in the reeds.
I'm guessing that's the Trent again. Be gone, you beast, attractive though you are. It's time for another canal scenery moment, just for a second or two. Have a sip of your tea while we meander gently. Aye, aye, I've got a stowaway on board. This'll be Colwich Lock, six foot six deep. And we emerge on the long curving channel past Shugborough Park and Shugborough Hall, the hall dating from 1693. According to my guidebook, the entire old village of Shugborough was bought and demolished by the hall's owners, so they'd have a bit more privacy. Who of us hasn't wanted to do that with our neighbors, eh? That's the hall. Think of the heating bills. The only downside to what appears to be a splendidly tranquil mooring spot is that up there is that railway line. Nice bridge, and in the distance, a lock, which I'll spare you as there were three boats going up and two down, so it got a bit tedious. Let us skip ahead to exiting the lock and noting the tea room to the side. Finally, we reach another canal milestone. That bridge on the left is the junction with the Staffordshire and Worcestershire Canal. This is Great Haywood, a well-known spot on the network, as most of the canal junctions tend to be. You can just see a hire fleet on the other side of that bridge. Quite handy, as they've a chandlery and I need to do an oil and filter change. Plus, it's getting really windy, so I'm stopping here for the night. Cheerio.